Welcome back, everyone, to the Plutonium Show. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. We're in a bit of a different setup today. It's temporary. We're just, you know, not home. Not in our usual place, rather. So, uh, other than that, nothing's changed. I'm Pluto, and... I'm Zach. Because I realize we haven't really been saying our names, and people don't know your name in particular, the new... The Hi. newcomers. So, today's agenda. Mm. I mean, obviously... We're going to cover that catastrophic car chase. Now, I know I've made a video about it, which if you haven't checked out, it's called The Unraveling. I will try to remember to put it in the description box and um, have a card up, you know, in the corner somewhere. But, you know, the podcast is an opportunity to not only elicit the opinions of someone else, but also to flesh things out mm. because it's that kind of a, a format. We're also going to cover initially, actually, we're going to start with this because this is something I didn't do in the video. Mm. We're going to listen to a snippet of uh, Madame Deficit's acceptance award for the Woman of Vision, uh, acceptance speech, sorry, for the Woman of Vision award that she received that I did the skit about. Yes, I remember that. So there's only a snippet floating around the internet. I'm supposing that, you know, there was no media inside, official media to record it. Yeah. So yeah, we'll listen to that joke mm -hmm. before we get to the other I mean, I don't want to call it a joke, but the other, uh, I don't even know what to call it. They're a, fig a figment of their imagination or their truth. Yeah. You know, my thoughts on it, uh, I still remember that you, you, I came home and you were like, you never guess what Megan did. And I'm like. And it's not just Megan. I said what they did. What they did. <laughs> and I thought to myself, oh man, she, let me guess the award, this, the award. I just imagined what she'd said at the awards. I could never have imagined this level of delusion mm -hmm. and so m what as we'll get into my thoughts on this temper tantrum that's what i think okay well i'll flesh that out yes yeah. uh yeah that's news to me um we're also going to cover backgrid now i've covered their statement in the video but their lawyers mm. um released a letter in response to Megan and Harry's lawyers, and that was done after I made my video. I made a community post about it. You know, we're all having a ball there, but it's definitely worth discussing and, you know, um, again, seeing what you have to say about it in, the, in this podcast. And finally, this is something I actually almost forgot about. Uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, mm. which will be our Wednesday, really, because she's in America, Megan is accepting another award. I mean, do they hand these out to everyone on the street? I mean, the people on the street are probably more wor more deserving than Megan. I would say so. Yeah. Nah, they're, they're handing it to people who... Um, look, this is speculation. I can't prove it, but we're all saying it. People who've got deep pockets. Mm. So, Gracie Awards for her uh, Archetypes podcast. So, it's not the first time her podcast has been awarded. I even made a video about it last November called uh, The Nominee. So, I had my fair you know share of things to say in that video. But... Again, we'll discuss. Yeah. So, the women, the women of Vision Award. Now, I made a four-minute skit about it, mm -hmm. which I love. I'm very proud of that skit. It, you know, it's not my usual. Um, it's not what people are usually used to from mm. me. But it's it was so much fun doing. You know, I played three different characters. Um, it was bizarre because I was talking to myself, obviously, yeah. and I was moving around. You know, the room I film in and my cat Leo's in the middle, and you know, just kind of going, what is she doing? Yeah, <laughs> that seems interesting. Back to sleep now. <laughs> I, I know I'm biased, but I have to say I really did enjoy that skit. And I thought you nailed it. Thank you. It was so much fun to do. It's definitely something I just, you know, I want to keep doing every now and then to spice things up. And um, yeah, so that was my way of kind of commenting on the joke hmm. of this Woman of Vision Award. Because I'd already covered in the nominee, you know, a long form type of video discussing how ridiculous it is to be awarding someone like Megan with anything that has to do with humanitarian, being a humanitarian and feminism. Yeah. So we have the same thing going on here. That's why I was like, okay, let's come up with an original way to comment on this. But um, she gives this speech. Now, this is, like I said, an award for her. There's a blurb. I'm not even going to bother reading it, but it's it's a joke. It's yeah. basically this, you know, a, a woman who has been fighting for equality and feminism. And you know what? I might as well just pull it up. Why not? I, I, it was it was on the background of my skit the whole time yeah. on the monitors, but I never actually read it out. So let's let's have a bit of a laugh, shall we? Yes, let's. I mean, you know, that's all Megan's really good for. 
first I want to point out before we read this out that Gloria Steinem is this kind of OG feminist. I'm not going to lie. You know, she's kind of, well, kind of, she's really before my time. Hmm. Um, she was, you know, in the sixties, she was one of the original right. kind of revolutionaries. But um, I don't know much about her, but the fact that she's aligned herself with the likes of Megan mm -hmm. makes me question what kind of a person, what kind of a feminist yep. she is. So she's awarding Megan. She was with her on stage. She was with her on the red carpet at this event. So it says, Megan, the Duchess of Sussex, is a feminist, champion of human rights and gender equity, and global role model. What? Yeah, a global role model on what not to do. Absolutely. Like the complete opposite of everything a human should stand for, let alone a feminist, let alone a woman who's meant to be representing other women of color. You know, <laughs> and, wait, you're ethnic? And she, uh, yeah. <laughs> and she only started doing that when it suited her. Yeah. Because she essentially passed off as a white woman mm. her entire life before she met Harry and it suited her agenda. But the feminist part, too. I mean, come on. We can dissect this one by one. Need I say the bullying report? Oh, where yeah. Where most of her victims, I would say nine out of ten of her victims were women. Yeah. So what's what, what kind of a feminist is that? And a woman who whose only accomplishment in life was to meet a man. Yeah. A very rich and ultra wealthy elite man a mm. mem a prince i mean come on it yep. doesn't get any higher than that a woman who was arguably a nobody before that yes for sure i mean she definitely wouldn't be getting this award mm. um and that's who you call a feminist a woman whose only accomplishment in life if you if you can even call it that her call to fame in life is marrying yeah. is that how low the bar has been set by the likes of Gloria Steinem, who's meant to be the original feminist. I mean, of our modern times, obviously. I mean, that's the thing, right? This joke of everyone gets a participation award, which removes the entire idea of giving out awards for accomplishments in the first place, right? It's been a joke for a while that everyone's a winner, right? Which, in certain situations, sure, that, that's fine. But when it comes to an award ceremony... Lots of money, lots of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Lots of spectacle, right? Mm. You were actually trying to award someone for something that they're meant to have done that's benefited the world. Megan has done nothing to benefit the world. Nothing at all. The last person that should be on that stage for feminism is Megan. And she was a close runner up to, say, the likes of Elizabeth Holmes, but I don't know how many times Elizabeth Holmes claimed to be a feminist. I don't think she's uttered that word once. And that's just it, right? Not, not that we're defending her. I made a video about her a week ago yeah. called um, The Reinventor because, mm -hmm. you know, she tried reinventing her image yeah, she... as a last ditch attempt to get out of prison. Yeah, maybe she should stop inventing things. Well, by the way, um, she is going to prison to start her 11.25 year uh, prison term. On the 30th of May. Wow. That's so, incredible because, you know, for the longest time, the idea that she's a woman, she might get away with it just because she's a woman and she's actually getting what's coming to her. Yeah. I mean, again, I know this is a podcast about um, the catastrophic car chase and all that, but we have different interests. I just, very briefly, I was worried that her pregnancy tricks would work yep. on, on the judge, on the jury, because Elizabeth Holmes... Again, check out my video, The Reinventor, if you don't know anything about it. I'm not going to go into it in detail, but she she's a con artist. She's a fraudster, a convicted criminal, and she tried getting... Well, she got pregnant twice at pivotal times, once before her trial and once before her sentencing. And now these two kids are going to live without their mother mm. for 11 years. And the first 11 years of their lives, because they're both babies yep. with their father. And so um, I was worried she would get away with it. Mm. But thankfully... In this case, justice was, uh, I suppose, blind. You know, it didn't matter that she was a woman. It didn't matter that she was a, a mother. Mm. And uh, she's going to, you know, face this prison term. Now, I don't know if she's going to appeal while she's inside and, you know, 
you know, get herself an early release or some good behavior bullshit, which we've heard happens. Yes, absolutely. That happens with celebrities all the time. Mm -hmm. So I suppose we'll wait and see. But um, yeah, that was part of a a new series. I want to do a mini series on uh, con artists. And believe it or not, I was going to put, I am going to make a video about Megan as part of that because yes, she's not a convicted criminal, Mm. but by her own admission, she's a fraud. Absolutely. So stay tuned for that one. Yeah. I mean, even if, No one else is falling for this. Even if the entire world's caught on to how much of a fraud Megan is, well, there's still one person who is apparently falling for it, as far as we know, and that's Harry. So I would say it's more than one person. Uh, We're going to discuss it today, actually, because there are still people out there, a minority, I will say a minority, who are uh, attacking us, the public, for going, for, you know, for saying, hey, you, you exaggerated this whole thing. And they're calling us racist and we're mean Mm. and we're bullying them Mm. for not believing their truth. But we'll get to that. Yeah. So this goes on. Her lifelong advocacy for women and girls remains a constant thread she weaves through both humanitarian and business ventures. What business ventures? What humanitarian? You guys spend on average, and this is at best, actually, because when you, you know, file for something for tax purposes, obviously... Many people don't put down the truth, right? Especially Meghan and Harry. They're yeah. going to put down their truth. Yep. So it could have been one hour a month that they worked on their charity, mm-hmm. on their foundation. But for tax purposes, they put in... Sorry, this keeps popping. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to not get too close to it. But for tax purposes, they've put in that they each work one hour per week. Which is so embarrassing. That's, I mean, look, that's a bit much for Megan. <laughs> you know, like that's, that's really pushing the boundaries. That's bending the truth a long way. Because no way. The only charity that Megan donates any time, effort or money to is the charity of Megan. Yep, spot on. And look, I'm reading through this whole thing. I, I probably i am going to put an overlay on the screen for you to look at. It's way too much. So I'm not going to waste our time. We've got about an hour, you know, reading through this, but it's a joke. It's an actual joke. And you know what? Obviously, I don't have, you know, evidence to prove this, but it sounds like she wrote it or her staff wrote it or she wrote it. Come on. And passed it on. Yeah, absolutely. It it doesn't sound like something that the Miss Foundation actually Mm. wrote for themselves because it's, oh my God, it's so self-congratulatory. It's Mm. so cringe. I wonder how much of a fight there was to put... Megan, the Duchess of Sussex, like to not just be like Megan or the Duchess of Sussex or just those. I can imagine so many words here were a back and forth consistently between whoever these organizers were. Oh, I doubt it. Uh, Gloria Steinem's her friend. She's got her around her finger. Maybe. So, no, she's I think she didn't have to push too hard for that at all. And, uh, you know, one more point, And I think we can touch upon this even when she, we listen to her speech, which we will do right now. Um, just bear in mind, this is a duchess being awarded for equity, equity. I mean, look, I'm not attacking the concept of aristocracy and royalty, but especially in the States where it's not recognized, Mm -hmm. why are you being introduced as the duchess of Sussex? Why not Meghan Markle? If you're really a feminist, Mm -hmm. where is your identity outside of your marriage Uh and the irony of equity being married to a duke? Because she knows her name means nothing. Her name means this is probably someone who's not telling the entire truth. This is probably someone who's trying to convince other people of other things. Her name is dirt when it comes to reputation. So by riding on the coattails of something as royal as the Duchess of Sussex, she's hoping maybe even to have that little bit of rebranding. It wouldn't be a rebranding. She's she is Megan, the Duchess of Sussex. For yeah. she has been for the past few years. If anything, Meghan Markle would be a rebranding. That's true, actually. But um, yeah, she. I think she just relies on it because she just knows that if you know, she's Meghan nobody. Mar- exactly. She's exactly. nobody. It's embarrassing. All right, let's listen to what she had to say as uh, a result of this award. Just never too late to start. You can be the visionary of your own life. You can charter a path in which what you repeat in your daily acts of service, in kindness, in advocacy, in grace, and in fairness, that those become the very things that are recognized by the next wave of women, both young and old. I mean, 
Where do we start? Okay, uh, here's a good Her one. Face says it all. Yeah, yeah. Here's a good one. Megan has never displayed any of those words in any of her actions. Every single one of those words that she said, grace, for it stuck out to me as one, but... Kindness. Kindness. Service. Service. This is the complete opposite of the the person that we have seen over the last few years. This is... It's like she's describing an alter ego that doesn't exist. Except for in her head. Yeah. And potentially in her husband's head. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I hope that he's waking up to it. But, you know, I've been saying that since the beginning and yeah, I don't think he ever will. You know, yeah, he's th- not waking up. It's, it, he's getting worse. Yeah. I think he's falling deeper and deeper into her spell. Yeah, I think after the car chase because, I mean, that's going to be a whole nother thing. But So, yeah, I mean, this is from a woman and no one's calling her out. I would be embarrassed to have this woman at my award ceremony if I was organizing this, if I was the Miss Foundation. If I knew that her father is pretty much dying in Mexico, which is not a long drive away from where she lives, Mm -hmm. he suffered from a stroke. I mean, obviously he's doing better now. And she didn't even pick up the phone to check on him and check how he's doing. You're talking about kindness. You dare as a bully, allegedly, I have to say that because we can't see the report, an alleged bully of your staff, someone who terrorized them to the point of tears, to the point of quitting, to the point of PTSD, Mm -hmm. and someone who makes a living out of trashing your family and your in-laws. And you dare use the words grace and service and kindness. The only service that you are doing is, as you always say, is servicing yourself. Absolutely. And showing kindness Mm. to yourself when what you should be doing is going away yeah because that's that's the only solution for these sorts of people there is no world where Meghan markle gets better what's really disheartening isn't only the fact that she's clearly you know not in the right headspace i don't know what's wrong with her mentally obviously i'm no psychologist i'm no mental health expert but you don't need to be one to figure out there's something sinister in her mind especially when you consider this catastrophic car chase that happened right after yeah but what's really disappointing and infuriating is seeing these established people like gloria steinem and Mm -hmm. oprah and giving her a platform yeah after she has been essentially deplatformed by herself yeah you know she and her husband they ruined their own reputation with oprah okay i get it they were still at the pinnacle Mm. At that point, you know, we hadn't, well, some people have been on to them since then. Yeah. But the rest of the world, including myself, until the Oprah interview, you know, I thought she was great. Yeah. So as much as I dislike Oprah and as, as much as, you know, growing up, growing up, my mom loved watching her. But so I kind of, kind of, you know, you kind of absorb that sense of, oh, it's Oprah. Yeah. Everyone your knows parents. Oprah. Yeah. yeah. But after that interview, she's a laughing stock. Absolutely. You know, and she's lost her journalistic integrity she's not even a journalist she's a she's an entertainer yeah i'm that that's just it though how much of a bubble does someone have to live in to not be able to see the writing on the wall because we can see it and we don't have to go far to look for it we all know what megan's about so how stuck in your own world and how sheltered do you have to be from reality to be in a position where you go, yeah, let's bring Meghan Markle over here. You know, even if she's your friend, supposedly, I don't think Meghan Markle has friends. I think she has tools. But even if she's your friend, I mean, we have friends that we wouldn't trust with things. You know, we have friends that, you know, okay, well, maybe this friend is not the right person to do this. Meghan Markle's not the right friend to put in an award ceremony. She's not the right friend to to award anything. Exactly. Um, And also, I don't know if they're in a bubble or if they're actually buying her bullshit or if they're just the same as her. Mm. Because, for example, we've got... I had this already to to discuss um, when we get to the car chase, but I'll bring it up now. Gail King, who is Oprah Winfrey's best friend, actually came out and said, it's troubling that people are downplaying the Harry and Meghan car chase. We're not, I mean, look, I'm going to keep reading it because I have a lot to say. She says, 
I think it's very unfortunate. It's troubling to me that anybody would try to downplay what that would mean to them. That's very troubling to me. I mean, how many times do you want to say that, first of all? <sighs> what that would mean to them? What, the, what, what a, a fantasy would mean to them? Well, that's what this whole thing has always been about. It's their truth. Yes. Their lived experience. Mm -hmm. Ignoring the truth. Yes. The objective reality. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? I mean, I'll tell you what it means to them. Have a look at the photo of her smiling in the back of the taxi. Mm -hmm. That's what it meant to her. Yep. That's the turmoil that she was going through. Absolutely. She was living her life. She was at the top of her game in her head based on that face. Yep. You know, she was living the dream. I'm finally Diana. I'm fine. You know, they say she is. Obviously, I'm, I'm in no way comparing the incidents. They are nothing alike. Mm -hmm. It's sickening that Harry even made that comparison. Yep. And it's clearly done with an agenda in the sense that their PR person, their spokesperson reached out out of the blue yep. with that statement announcing to the world that they've been involved in a near catastrophic car chase for two hours. I mean, if it really happened, then you wouldn't need to make an official statement for it because it, it the world would know. You wouldn't have to let people know through your press machine. Exactly. We would have had footage. Yep. The police would have been involved. Yep. We would have had... You know, eyewitnesses and fo everyone's got a phone on them. Exactly. Children walk around with phones and iPads. Uh, let's talk about the fact that we are living in a world where just about everyone has security cameras everywhere. Every single shop, I would say in New York, would have some sort of surveillance somewhere. There's always a way to watch the streets. Always. And not to mention that, you know, they would have cameras for the police. Exactly. And not a single camera in one of the busiest cities, if not the busiest city in the entire world. Okay, it's not the busiest, but one of the busiest cities in the entire world. Not one camera has any evidence of this. What's troubling, Gail King, is your continued support of two people who have literally lied time and time again on a public platform to hundreds of millions of people, if not billions collectively, and who make money out of this yep. and who make money would you trust your own family gail to make money out of them mm -hmm. Con and would you continue to do so mm -hmm. would you trash your in-laws or whoever it is who gave you the platform that you now have mm -hmm. and completely unprovoked yep. just non-stop senseless attacks that's troubling yeah would you keep bringing up your dead mother who's been dead for 26 years and com you know References to her along with your penis. I mean, yep. Gail doesn't have a penis, but you know, yeah. along with your downstairs and in the one sentence. I mean, come yeah. on, that's troubling. It's so, so wrong. Here's the thing, right? That these people in their bubbles or their delusions need to understand. Meghan Markle is Medusa. If she so much as looks at you, you will your career will turn to stone your reputation will turn to stone you will crumble and that's just like oprah just like gloria steinem and just like gail now you associated with megan in a positive light trying to make megan something she isn't which is anything positive and now the next time you say something people are going to doubt it You've just destroyed your own reputation. Gail did that a long time ago. Mm. Gail's always been a proponent of them. As mm. soon as, you know, they came over here, she was their mouthpiece. And by the way, I don't want to be mean. And again, maybe I'm too young to know this, but um, in the sense that, you know, Gail and Oprah were kind of way, you know, their height was before my time. In the yeah. sense that I was at best a little child mm -hmm. while they were really, you know, on prime time. But what I'm trying to say is it's always been Oprah. Yeah. Gail was just always Oprah's friend, mm. you know, so she's never been an established, mm -hmm. credible personality all on her own. People just know her as Oprah's best friend. Yeah. So to say that, you know, she's going to tarnish her reputation, I, I don't I, I don't really know if Gail has one, an yeah. established one to begin with. So, yeah. uh, you know, go ahead. Um, but yeah, what's troubling is the people who continue to platform these two yeah. and believe them. And I mean, what more do you want? We have the mayor saying, I highly doubt this happened in the way that the Sussexes described it in their statement. Yeah. We have the NYPD saying it didn't happen, essentially. Of course, yeah. they told us what happened factually. Yeah. And by saying that, they negated 
what didn't happen, yeah. right? What, Harry and Meghan's version. Let's visit that just for a second too, because when it comes to police departments, they have to be careful with what they say a lot of the time. Their statements are often very carefully worded. Same with the mayor, yeah. right? It's It's like how politicians have to have very curated things so nothing can be misinterpreted. So for the NYPD to almost flat out contradict them word for word, to not even leave room for error, is huge. Absolutely. And that's why all of us have been commenting on this. And of course, there was the mainstream media like BBC. It's so embarrassing. ITV, they jumped on the statement instantly without stopping or bothering to verify the Mm. claims. Because I said this in my video, the moment I read that headline... I felt skeptical yep. as opposed to, oh my God, you know, as much as we dislike the way they behave, I would hate for something like that to happen to them. Yep. But there was my instinct. There was no concern. Absolutely. I instantly thought this is staged. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not saying it is for a fact. I'm telling you what my instinct was. Yeah. It was 100% exaggerated, which Omid Scobie, their mouthpiece, later had to come out and say, Oh, it was an emotional statement. You see, the mayor and the NYPD released factual statements. Meghan and Harry's statement was emotional. Basically, once again, touting the horn of, that was their truth, though. Yeah. You know, it wasn't the truth, but it was their truth. Okay, here's the thing about their truth. All you said, Omid, is that, one, they are capable of telling things. He has essentially admitted that what they say and the truth are two different things. And two, he's essentially said that any emotional statement from them is going to be anything. They can essentially say what they want. So long as it's an emotional thing, it can stray as far as they want from the facts, which is a dangerous precedent to want to set. Well, it's okay. So I guess they were feeling emotional when they pretty much, you know, accused the royal family of being racist. And then two years later, they, you know, they stopped being so emotional about it. And so they went, oh, you know what? We never said that. We never said that. It was the British press that said it. We meant unconscious bias. Really? (laughs) So you let that narrative play out for two years. You let Prince Philip and the Queen die Mm -hmm. with that accusation looming over their heads, even though it wasn't targeted at them personally. Yep. What does that say when the head of an institution is allowing this to happen in in her own monarchy, being the Queen? What does that say about the Queen? You may not have accused her directly, but you all but did Mm. in the sense that you accused her of allowing it. Mm. But in Meghan's head, Queen Elizabeth isn't Meghan. So Meghan doesn't care. And that's the constant cycle. She doesn't care if someone else's name is dragged through the mud. She only cares if if her name is dragged through the mud. But then her name is constantly dragged through the mud through her own actions. Exactly. And that's literally the next point. It's... What this has done, this whole incident, and how it's been so overblown and so quickly dismantled, that's why I called my video The Unraveling. Mm -hmm. This exaggeration of theirs, I was about to call it a lie, but I can't say that, unraveled in a few hours. Yeah. And it's embarrassing if I were them. I mean, she's apparently coming out tomorrow to accept an award, right? What, is she going to pull that stunt again? We'll see. But (sighs) if I were her, I wouldn't leave my house Mm. for months. Mm. I would be that embarrassed Mm. after being caught out. You know, it's so humiliating. And she's going to still parade out there with her Cheshire Cat grin Mm -hmm. plastered over her face. Yep. Where To the point where that grin looks painful. It does. She looks like she's in pain. It does. But here's the thing. The only way someone can do that, the only way someone can... It, ignore the shame is by not feeling it at all. She is shameless. She doesn't know how to feel humility. She doesn't know how to feel basic human emotions. And we've seen that constantly throughout her, how should I say, career as Harry's wife. That's always been the case. She goes and does something that most of us wouldn't dream of doing. She embarrasses herself on the world stage over and over again and still shows her head as if nothing happened. Like, everyone's going to forget that. We're not forgetting, though. I've had experiences with someone just like this. Yeah. Where they have no shame. They basically commit criminal acts against people and they still show their faces like nothing happened. Yeah. Like, they're the most popular person in the room. Yep. Not knowing that they're a laughingstock and 
you know, the nicknames people have for them behind their back. It's mm-hmm. so humiliating. So I know because I know what people say about these people behind their back. Yeah. And ex- except in Megan's case, it's not behind her back. It's in front it's of It's the her. media. It's... And the fact that there are still people out there, still news channels, I don't know if they're just covering their own behinds or mm-hmm. if you know, they're just embarrassed and humiliated, but they're still saying, oh no, but they must have been so triggered. Harry must have been so traumatized. Why? Because they were driving around slowly, waiting to kind of lose the paparazzi, which is what the police said. Yeah. That's what the police said. Yeah. Of course, it may not be true. We have contradictory evidence, which mm-hmm. we will get to. But why? Yeah, because they were driving around slowly. And again, what, what does it say? A picture says a picture is worth a thousand words. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, look at the photo of them in the back of the taxi. Yeah. Harry's filming. Yeah. Is that what a traumatized person does? Not unless they're really about, about their mind, but he's going to film his smiling wife. Like, well, that's the thing. It just doesn't look, it just doesn't look genuine. Yeah. And I mean, you're right. You know, people who are really switched on, like, you know, People in the military. Yeah. We can act very calmly under pressure. It's yeah. literally our training. So maybe, maybe Harry was calm under pressure because mm. it was his military training. But then you kind of go, yeah, but you exposed your military training reality in your book. Yeah. The army just bent over backwards to do whatever he wanted. Yeah. It was so unlike the real thing. And I can tell you because mm. I went through exactly what harry went through and i'm not a soldier i went through officer training yeah you know identical to harry just in a different country Mm -hmm. and the fact that you know uh, i've I've already talked about this in 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 the book review so i'm not going to get into it but his experience with the military was a joke yeah so i wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't know how to behave under pressure yeah i i just don't see it because i mean the thing is Life with Megan would be constant pressure. It, it must be. It must be. So, I, and he still doesn't know how to behave. He still doesn't know that what he's putting out, he's, as you always say, he's doing the same things that she's doing, even if it's, if it's controlled by her, it's still him doing it. He'll put out statements. He'll say ridiculous things. He'll write a damn book throwing his family's name through the mud. Oh, but God forbid his name should be dragged through the mud, you know? He just doesn't understand. There's he no accountability. Exactly. And he's done it. When he was promoting his book, he said, oh, it's the British press. When he made that Taliban comment, the really reckless, I killed 25 Taliban. Yeah. He blamed the British press for that. You said it. Yeah. Anyways. I mean, I've got it, I've got it in writing right here. <laughs> exactly. Like, I mean, that's, that's the thing with them. Yeah. When the evidence is staring them right in the face. Yeah. I mean, in a court of law... Megan had to eventually bend, you know, and apologize because it's a court of law yeah. when she was presented with evidence that she did collaborate with Omid mm-hmm. and, you know, the other author for the book. If it wasn't in a courtroom situation, if it was in an interview, yep. she probably still would have continued denying it. Absolutely. Because she thinks that she can just overwrite facts. She thinks she has that power. She yeah. thinks she is a deity, a goddess yeah. among this world. And she treats people like it. Absolutely. A very cruel goddess, I might add, because you're nothing benevolent about that one. So there's nothing new, really, the implications of this entire, you know, chase that never was, I can now say. Because let's not pretend they had any credibility before it happened. Mm -hmm. Because they didn't. And that's why most of the world was skeptical. That's why I received tons of messages telling me, have you seen this? I don't buy it for one second. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're not, can we all be that collectively cruel and callous, really? Mm, No. And that's why, oh, meets Kobe, the royal family didn't reach out to Meghan and Harry. Mm -hmm. Because he complained about that. Of course, you know, as a mouthpiece for Meghan and Harry. Because they probably didn't believe you. And then they waited a couple of hours and saw that it was all an exaggeration. And they probably saw the photos of you smiling in the back of that taxi. Mm. I think that if anyone had a live feed, here's here's a theory that um, might lend to this story even though prince harry has been you know has excommunicated himself from the family i wouldn't put it past king charles to still have some sort of surveillance on him just to check he's okay just a typical father thing so i wouldn't be surprised if any event he goes to or anywhere he goes king charles just has people keeping an eye on him making sure that he's okay making sure that he's not in any trouble right again all a theory so 
if we go with his theory, then perhaps they had people on the scene and they knew exactly what was going on, which means there was no cause for anything like that. Yeah, I don't know. That seems to me a bit of a stretch. Mm. It's not impossible. Yeah. But to me, it seems a bit of a stretch. I think what's more likely is they they lived with them. Don't forget. Yeah. We know we feel like we know them so well because of their public antics. Yeah. They lived with them. Mm-hmm. So they know Megan. They yeah. know Harry. And I think it's very telling that they didn't reach out. Yeah. And then the very next day, Catherine was on, um, she went to an event, a mm-hmm. mental health awareness, which was wearing this beautiful green dress. And she just looked like there, she didn't have a care in the world. Yeah. The very next day. Yep. Because it turned out to be much ado about nothing, hmm. as is always the case with this couple. Yeah. I mean, I'm waiting for them to prove us wrong. I literally waited for 24 hours before I made my video, The Unraveling, mm-hmm. because unlike the other news channels, I'm not a news channel, unlike the media, I wanted to wait and give them the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. I always do this. You've always been like that. You've always, even if so, there's a rumor going around, you don't report rumors, you report facts. Even when Harry's book was first announced, way back in September, I think, I didn't say a word about it. Yep. Because I wanted to wait. I'm like, well, look, guys, we didn't read it yet. Yep. So let's read it and then let's rip into it. Yeah, because which, there's going to be plenty to rip into. Yeah, but what happened was there's this uproar about the book when people hadn't even read it yet. <laughs> so that's the same thing. I wanted to wait for Meghan and Harry to produce evidence. Mm. Well, it's been days by yeah. now. And all they've done is threaten Backgrid. <laughs> now, before I get to Backgrid's response to their legal demands... Backward is a familiar name on this channel. I'm sure yeah. you've heard me say it a hundred times before. And it's a familiar name on many channels that cover Megan. Because they seem to be the only agency that know where she is mm-hmm. magically. Yep. Even if she's, whether, you know, whether she's hiking in a mountain or she's going to a glitzy restaurant four hours away from her house. Mm-hmm. They always seem to know when to capture her. Yep. So they were, they're, they're, they're deemed... A dial-up pap service. Yeah. I don't know if it's true, but many people say it with authority, especially people residing in Los Angeles. And so they seem to know. It's like a known thing. You know, like, oh, yeah. this company, yeah, we know, it's dial-up pap. Which, whatever. I mean, I, I don't agree with the idea of calling the paparazzi and telling you where they are, but I don't, I don't hold anything against Backgrid. Mm. It's just the way they make their money. I mean, if there's a market for it, right? Yeah. They, they, it's... It's it's an honest way of making money. So yeah. they're not hurting anyone. But they had photographers at the event, and they're the ones involved in this whole, you know, fiasco. And these photographers, of course, had cameras, which means they captured what actually happened. Yeah. And that's what's covered in their initial statement that they released completely, you know, not in response to Meghan and Harry demanding anything. They just released it. To, to clear the record. Yeah. Which I'm so glad they did. Everyone now, even in the community post I made about their response, everyone's like, oh, we love Backgrid. Mm. So, um, yeah, if you ever go to LA and you're famous, just, you know, <laughs> plugging if, them in. <laughs> or if you're, you know, lacking a little bit of fame. And <laughs> Maybe. Want, yeah. But in that response, they basically said we had four photographers on the scene. Yep. And we have reviewed their footage and not only did everything that Meghan and Harry say not happen mm-hmm. in the way that they said it. Yep. We have footage proving that it was the other way around. Mm-hmm. Being that Meghan and Harry's car, the SUV, because they had like four. It was it was like a, a mini motorcade. Yeah. They had like this whole thing because they think they're that important. <laughs> four SUVs for a nobody. In New York. Yep. Where it's back-to-back traffic anyway. I mean, thanks for contributing. Yeah. But they had footage of their car driving recklessly and dangerously Mm -hmm. going over the sidewalk blocking roads and to the point where it was pulled over by the police so it's the exact opposite account except they seem to have the evidence yeah now obviously they're not going to release it i think without anyone buying it you know the media because it's the way they make their money so if anyone's saying oh yeah well why isn't that out yet Probably because no one's yeah. bought it, maybe. And there would be a big bounty on that, I bet. That yeah. would go for a high price. Yeah. But then a photographer came out on camera, but with his back to the camera. Yeah. Wearing a hoodie. And I put this footage in my video, The Unraveling, where he repeated, he was on scene. He's not just some random backward photographer. He was one of the freelancers on scene. Yeah. And he said with his own voice, he's right there on camera, that... Megan's car, well, Megan and Harry's SUV 
their security car was driving not only recklessly and dangerously, yep. but basically, again, it did everything that Meghan and Harry claimed the paparazzi did. Yeah, that sounds about right. And what's really telling is their security guard who used to work for Obama, and we'll get to that. That's a very important point. Hang on to it. Went to CNN early, you know, right after the statement, before the contradictory evidence came out. Yep. And yeah. said, not he said many things like, oh, it's the most difficult. and like, It was so chaotic. It was the worst thing I'd ever seen. He, he really blew it up. But then most tellingly, he said this. We did everything by the book. We did everything according to the law. There was no, there wasn't, any point at no point did we break the law and he said that without being prompted to say that it wasn't in response to a question of did you break the law mm. did you do anything that's untoward did yeah. you do he just said it and yeah. what does that tell you that i mean it's like when you walk past the police in in public and you go i mean it's an i mean it's an um if you're going to proclaim your innocence unprovoked Chances are you're guilty of something. What have you done? Yep. What have you done? Oh boy. So that's how it stood out to me, and that yeah. that scenario you just you just referenced. It's not even a hypothetical, by the way. Well, we've uh, dealt with someone who uh, yep. loves to proclaim their innocence whenever the police is mentioned. Yeah. But um, that's what reminded me of it. Yeah. I was like, this is identical behavior. Mm. So did you really do everything by the book and by the law? Did you have to say it? It's like Megan saying, I'm kind. I'm a good person. Yeah. I'm a humanitarian. Mm. Decked in thousands of hundreds of thousands of dollars of jewelry. But I'm still a humanitarian. Really? I mean, yeah. if you were, you wouldn't have to say it. Yeah, exactly. Humanitarians, for the most part, go out and do humanitarian work. And they don't constantly talk about how they're a humanitarian. In fact, most of the humanitarians I've seen in my life and seen, you know, all over in different events and whatnot... Most of them talk about their work and what they've done. And they don't talk. It's not inward. It's not about themselves. It's about the other people. Something Megan is incapable of. And not only that, most of them or all the genuine ones, and I'm going to include Princess Diana in this one, you know, her role model. They do it behind the scenes. Yeah. There are some, in, you know, um, instances where the camera was with diana because she wanted to raise awareness yeah but there were many times as her bodyguard and many people who knew her would have seen you know in mm. real time where she would go in disguise completely incognito yeah without the press without the cameras yeah and she would go do these good deeds and i'll be the first to tell you diana's no angel in my eyes mm. you know she made her mistake she was human yep and um she wasn't wearing a seatbelt, which is something that Megan and Harry were not doing either and at the back of that taxi. This is something I really wanted to say. Why was the car driving erratically? Well, if you weren't going to fool anyone in New York, then the least Megan could do is fool Harry. Because I'm sure it's probably been said thousands of times. But entrenching the claws into Harry, making Harry think that his mother has been reincarnated into Megan... This just, this was her plan. Yeah. If it was even a well, plan. You, you know? can't say this was because we don't know for a fact. But you think. I think this was Based would be on her, the evidence you've seen. Yeah. Sorry, I'm being his lawyer right now. <laughs> I love it. Um, um, this, Yeah, exactly. I think that this would be the, the, I mean, it just, the pieces fit, you know? They do. Unfortunately, based on what we have seen in public, yeah. their, their modus operandi, they do. Yeah. And even down to the seatbelt. I think that that was purposeful. I think that that was something that she, she, oh, I can only imagine the conversations that would have happened in that car. The interesting thing is we don't know what they were doing in the SUV and whether they were wearing, they were wearing their seatbelts in the SUV. And I guess yeah. we'll never know because Backgrid won't give them. Well, actually, no, I'll get to that. I'll get to Backgrid. Yeah. But we didn't see what happened. This is what they're going to say for yeah. sure. We weren't wearing the seatbelt in the taxi because it was a small ride around the block. Mm. Which, by the way, I heard someone say that their place of residence was like two blocks away from there and they could have easily gone there, but yeah. they wanted to shake off the paparazzi. Mm. Sure. Okay, great. Well, <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to buy that, but sure. No. But they're going to come back and say, 
the taxi was the end bit. You know, it wasn't the chaotic bit. It wasn't the car chase. Because that's what Sonny Singh, the taxi driver, has been saying. Yeah. He's saying it wasn't chaotic. It was mm -hmm. absolutely, I was safe. It's New York. Everyone was safe. I never at one point felt any danger. The photographers kept their distance. They were respectful. Mm. And they were doing what any journalist would do, taking their photos to make a quick buck. Yeah. You see, the thing is that, uh, uh, I mean, I'm not sure how much Sonny Singh knew about Megan before this. Nothing. But, um, he kept calling her Harry's wife. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, that's the only danger he would have felt if he actually knew who she was. Well, the, the thing is, he's been saying that and now he's been silenced. Mm. You know, well, people are saying, is he silent or has he been silenced? Mm. And that's a quote from the Oprah interview with Megan. Yeah. So he's gone, mum. Right. All of a sudden. Mm. And people are saying, what's going on? Yeah. Did he receive a threatening letter? Because... Of course, to me, it's believable. Yeah. I, I can't prove it, but it's believable if you were to tell me. I'd be like, of course they did that. Mm -hmm. That's all they do. Yeah, exactly. I mean, this is what happened with Backgrid. Exactly. And they've done it to BBC when the BBC announced that they named their, their daughter Lilibet, Lilibet without taking the Queen's permission first. They, they do it all the time. A lot of the time it's empty threats, but yeah. a lot of the time it's not. Mm -hmm. And poor Sunny Singh, who became the most famous taxi driver overnight what's he gonna do when he receives a threatening scary letter from Meghan and harry's you know it's probably got that letterhead the duke from the office of the duke and duchess of sussex he's like oh my goodness yeah so i wouldn't be surprised if they silenced him why would he si suddenly go quiet yeah i'm assuming he was getting paid for these interviews and he was probably getting his 15 minutes and he was happy and yeah, yeah and I he was telling the truth and that's the that's it. That's the most threatening thing to anything to do with Megan is when people tell the truth. But the thing is about this security guard with that, you know, I'm bringing up um, the taxi swap, yeah. the, the car swap. Why would you do that? Exactly. I think someone said, oh, it's because they were trying to lose the paparazzi by getting out of their very distinct SUV mm. and getting into a non-distinct yellow cab. Which in New York, there's a lot. I get that argument. Yeah. I do. However, I'm not convinced because of who we're talking about. Yeah, exactly. I mean, look, again, if we visit the court of law scenario, if this was going to trial, is that the only evidence you've got? Yeah. And no, that's speculation from, an un, in, from, from, a, from a third party yeah. journalist. He's not even in part of their team. He's just saying, oh, well, I see what they were trying to do if that's what they're trying to do. Yeah. However, you then hear from... I think he was Diana's former bodyguard. I heard and you know, I watched an interview of his yesterday where he said, this is the biggest security blunder ever getting your principals out of their secure SUV mm -hmm. and into a random taxi, yeah. you know, a cab yeah. with a random stranger for a driver. Mm -hmm. And then he walks out at one point and I put this footage up in the unraveling, the security guard, and just leaves them in the car while they're getting papped. And that's when Megan's smiling. Yeah. It so, doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. And they hail the cab next to a police station. Yeah. Instead of retreating into the police station. If you were in fear of your life, if you were in a near catastrophic car chase, which they keep, you know, people, their proponents are saying, it wasn't high speed. Stop using that word. I've personally never used it, but it's implied. Yeah, it is. It's a near catastrophic car chase. It's a car chase, not a car <laughs> I, I don't know Follow. Fer ferris wheel <laughs> you know what else are we going to imagine yeah how else would it be near catastrophic yeah i mean you can't have near catastrophic cars if they're not moving at incredible speed i heard that the average speed of a moving car in new york is 4.7 miles per hour oh wow geez that's what i heard far and out. that's on a good day yeah and that's really i don't know what that is in kilometers but i know that by the time you get to um like uh, what is it 60 miles per hour to to 60 kilometers per hour that's not too bad 60 miles per hour is pretty fast yeah but so you know the head of royal security or the ex-head of royal security had criticism and what's interesting is i found this article from page six and they they expose the security guard i think his name is sanchez everything's odd hmm. okay this article talks about how Meghan and Harry personally decided to parade past the photographers before the chase. Now, their decision was made despite their security being led by a former member of Barack Obama's Secret Service detail. Mm -hmm. And he's known as the king of the back exits mm. for his ability to quietly get celebrities out of high-profile situations. 
Right. His name is Chris Sanchez, mm-hmm. a renowned ex-secret serviceman. Yep. This is the same Chris Sanchez who talked, to, who talked exclusively to CNN and said this was the most harrowing experience he's ever been involved with. And I didn't know about this article, that he was yeah. the king of the back exits when I made the unraveling. Yeah. But, and all I had to say in response was a slow, potentially two hour, the police are saying 20 minutes. Yeah. Drive around New York to shake off four paparazzi. Yeah. Was the most harrowing thing you've ever experienced. Uh, he, okay. Barack Obama <laughs> during his presidency. You're telling me that Barack wouldn't have had any sticky situations that would have been more intense. No, 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 no. I, I mean, look, you're the mouthpiece for Megan when you're on that interview. Sorry, but everything you say is going to be questioned now. Everything you say. Credibility down the drain. Well, that's what makes this so confusing because he was the one who was jumped, who, who was with them and who jumped out of the SUV yep. into the taxi mm-hmm. and then got out of the taxi and left them alone. This guy is apparently top notch. Yeah. Because what I said in the unraveling was maybe you should pay better because you have money. Go yeah. get better security guards. I didn't know he was... A part of Ob- Barama's Barama's. <laughs> Who's Barama? Barama's Obama's Secret Service detail yeah. and the king of the back exit, so he could have gotten them out of the venue. Yeah. After the award ceremony, without being photographed and therefore without being followed. Which means that the only reason that they were followed and they were in the public view was because they it was by be. design. Exactly. They wanted to be. Whether they wanted to be followed is a different story, okay? Mm. We don't have the evidence to back that up yet. Mm. You know, definitive evidence, I should say. We have yeah. circumstantial evidence, which can be very strong. A big smile on her face. That's certainly, you know, hey, but, this is the time of my life. I love it when the paps have to follow me around. And this is them leaving, I think. Uh, anyways, um, there are a few photos of them leaving. There's even footage. I'll try to find some and oh put gosh, them up. Oh my gosh, what is that smile? It's it's just frozen it on looks her. Like, it, 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 it looks like someone stretched her face onto her, like it's bolted on and i'm sorry he doesn't look too traumatized harry no he looks like he's having he looks like he's had a few drinks he looks happy yeah he looks really happy yeah oh there she is look at that look she's loving it yeah she is loving yeah, this it. is the life oh, i have kids at home oh i forgot sorry yeah in a different state <laughs> so this article was very interesting to me because it really makes you think yeah about so they had the top-notch security that money could buy, mm-hmm. presumably. Yeah. If you work for Obama, you're pretty much it. When he was president. I mean, money isn't an object for the United States government, I would assume. So they have this guy, and he's the king of the back exits. And they could have left without being seen if they wanted to. And there are still people out there pretending that they're victims. Like Gail King, and even... The photographer guy who intro- who she introduced for the TED Talk, you don't know about this, I think, but this photographer dude who takes photos of her and she opened up um, his TED Talk with a video message where she looked like an AI rendition of herself, by the way. <laughs> that I'm not even trying to be mean. Actually, I think you, I remember you mentioning that video. Yeah, yeah and you saw it. Yeah. It was with the pin straight hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, that was that was creepy. That was very creepy. But anyways, it, that guy came out and said, oh, my God, they need to be protected. Excuse me? What? Yeah, no, actually, we, civilization needs to be protected against them. I mean, it's insane that, and this is a woman who preaches equality, right? Mm-hmm. But she surrounds herself with people who think that they deserve all the protection in the world. Yeah. While the rest of us have to walk out there. We're just as vulnerable. Yep. We're just as soft and squishy. Uh We bleed. And yet we have to go out there and contend with the world and everything it has to throw at us. Yep. There are people in a New York subway getting thrown onto the rail, the actual railway Mm -hmm. by crazy people. Yep. To get hit. There are people in New York subway, and I'm focusing on, the, on New York because this is where this happened, right? Yeah. Who are being attacked on the subway by random people who are mentally ill and who need help. Mm-hmm. You know, the system has led them down. But th- this, no one cares about the people of New York. No. No one cares because they're not rich and famous and elite. But Harry and Meghan with their four SUV brigade and security guards and all the money in the world... They need protection. They need to get police tax-funded protection. Mm. I mean, what is this? Are we in a, 
I don't even know if it's the dark ages. I don't even know if it was that bad. I guess it was. I love history. And, you know, back in the day, yeah, you had peasants living in their shit Mm -hmm. while kings and queens lived in their palaces. Yep. And that's exactly the way Megan wants it. She wants to be above everyone else. That's why she says what she wants. She does what she wants. She prances around like she is the mightiest of them all. It's disgusting. And I always come back to this. How are there people supporting this? It's one thing for the principals themselves, right? Yeah. The actual people involved, Meghan and Harry, to tout their own horn and to blow this whole story up. And yeah. for Harry to say, my family deserves private jets because we're special. Mm. The rest of you don't take holidays. Yeah. You know, me and Meghan proudly accumulated more air miles than anyone else in the world when we were dating because we flew across the world a hundred times a week. To see, each, to see each other, but you guys don't go on holiday. Yep, that's exactly what a spoiled prince would say. And this is what they're doing right now. Mm-hmm. At least people around them. Yep. And let's not pretend that Harry doesn't have a lawsuit right now in the UK suing the government for police protection. Mm-hmm. I believe it was the day before. The day before this happened, yeah. he was at court and the Met Police said, yep. we're not for hire. Mm-hmm. And this is what happens. Yep. Absolutely. I mean, the puzzle, the puzzle is fitting. Yeah. Everything is falling into place. And people out there are still calling people like us racist Mm -hmm. and mean Mm -hmm. and heartless for questioning a story that has been debunked by the mayor and the police and the cab driver involved and the paparazzi who were there. You can say they're biased, but footage is not biased. Yeah. You know? Evidence is not biased. And why would the NYPD need to be biased if an incident happens? Oh, the paparazzi, sorry. No, the That's paparazzi, what I meant. right. Speaking of the paparazzi, Bagrid's legal letter. Yes. So Meghan and Harry demanded, they sent a legal letter, mm-hmm. basically threatening Bagrid, going, right. we demand that you give us uh, possession of any and all footage of the night in question. Mm-hmm. And Bagrid comes back with this golden response. In America, as I'm sure you know, property belongs to the owner of it. Third parties cannot just demand it be given to them, as perhaps kings can do. Perhaps you should sit down with your client and advise them that his English rules of loyal prerogative to demand that the citizenry hand over their property to the crown were rejected by this country long ago. We stand by our founding fathers. Can I just say, that's just, I was, as beautiful. I've seen it before, <laughs> but every time it just hits the nail on the head. Now, what scenario would someone say, demand something for a king? Let's revisit our peasants living in shit thing, right? Where yep. the kings would just take whatever they want, whenever they want. Who cares about the peasants? Again, that whole notion of, we are mightier than thou. And we can do whatever we want. And it sounds like Backward said, yeah, try. Let's see. Let's Absolutely. see you try. And it's worth pointing out because I did get a lot of this, um, a lot of comments in response to this community post from Brits who said, hey, I have to say, actually, it's the first one here from Lorraine. Lorraine Crampton says, I have to reiterate that the monarch, at least of my country, the UK, does not have the right to demand that the people hand over any of the possessions they legally own. So this is not even the case in the UK, but, you know, we can forgive Bagrid that. I think they were being sarcastic. Absolutely. I mean, the the, the thing is that there are, I would like to imagine there aren't many countries left in the world that are so backwards that that would be a thing where Mm. a monarchy could just demand whatever they want. And Harry needs to remember that. It also kind of begs the question, how many things did Harry demand while he was in the royal family? Well, what Meghan wants, Meghan gets, he yelled, allegedly. Yeah. I mean, even before Meghan, how many times did Harry just be the spoilt little brat and scream and shout until he got something he wanted because he was the petulant child that couldn't take no for an answer? Well, he definitely did that in the military. Absolutely. That's why he uh, was you know, given certain posts because he begged for them. That is so, I cannot tell you how foreign that concept is to me. I can't even choose where to live if I was still full time. Yeah. I, you know, they they could post me at the ass end of the world. Yeah. And I wouldn't be able to say no. Yep. You 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 follow orders. You do have preferences. You put them down, you Mm -hmm. write them down, but it's never a guarantee. Mm -hmm. So to, to read about Harry 
himself telling us because he's so out of touch with what the real experience of military service is. Yeah. He didn't even realize how out of touch it's going to seem when he put it down in a book. Mm -hmm. And I know not many people serve statistically around the world, but there are a few and we called it out. Yeah. You know, it's like, this is a joke. So he's definitely a spoiled brat who's used to getting his way. Yeah. And this is what I put in the community posts. And I still stand by this. In my opinion, just my opinion, the fact that they're making these angry demands to me only serves to prove that they want something hidden. Yes. That there is something in these photos and camera footage, you know, the video footage that they do not want to be seen. Yep. And if it exonerated them, if mm. it proved their case, yeah. then they would tell Bagrid, release it to the public. Absolutely. You know, why are they demanding possession of it? Someone in the comments of the community post said, because they want it for Netflix footage. Yeah. Which also makes sense. Yeah. I do agree with that. Mm. But I also think that my, my point to me, I still find that it's credible in the sense that what are you trying to hide? Yep. Absolutely. I think they want possession of anything that they that involves them anything i mean look the the simple notion that it goes against what they said is already threatening enough right so ah, man they just they think they can get away with a, another lie and that's the entire world just came out and said no well i see this it's funny because you mentioned temper tantrum earlier right yeah i did and before you get to your bit i just want to quickly say i see this as a temper tantrum in re in reaction to their plan not going according to how they wanted it yes. to go. Yes. Yep. As for temper tantrum, uh, which I said at the beginning, I think the entire thing is a temper tantrum. The entire car chase is a temper tantrum. Well, the non-existent. It didn't happen. Exactly. The way they said it. Exactly. The entire notion of anything that happened there. Because what did we just have? We had a coronation. Mm -hmm. And someone went and took a hike, and that didn't get a lot of attention right that was literally the took a hike that was the best she could do is take a hike with that <laughs> and again you know maybe it was because she didn't bring her husband who gave her all this clout in the first place gave her all the jewelry mm -hmm. she went to a hike with hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of jewelry and anyone who's been on a real hike knows that that's not what you take to a hike so talk about oh i'm not safe what's we talked about this for the coronation megan wants to upstage everybody we all said what is she going to do for the coronation and i think that this is still a response mm. to the entire coronation because that was a massive event mm -hmm. that was a once in a lifetime opportunity mm -hmm. and only someone as deluded as megan would think i'm going to upstage this and even though it's been some time after i still think that part of her went I need to beat that. And it this was her this was the golden opportunity as far as she saw it. Literally, she even dressed in the color. Exactly. Which by the way to me just only proves your point. Yeah. I mean, I look. I don't know if she was overdressed. I think she was. Mm. It was an event that wouldn't really have made a lot of headlines had this car chase not yeah, taken place. And that's just it, right? Knowing that the awards ceremony is not going to be as big of a spectacle as you want it to be, right? As the she, coronation, for she, instance. She dresses like she's going to the Oscars. Exactly. And so... That was my first thought. Yeah. And so I think that that's what this is. I think this is her still trying to... I mean, all of us have seen the coronation, all, all this and that, and we've gone, hey, we have a new king, all of that. We've all processed it. And she still wants to try and erase it, you know? Upstage it. Yes. Yeah. 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 I agree with you. I think, you know, she wasn't even at the Met Gala. She's nowhere. Mm. She's nowhere. No one's inviting her to any important event. And by the way, I, I don't think anything, you know, of the Met Gala. I think it's a joke. I always call it the Hunger Games because mm. it just reminds me of the Capitol. Yeah. And all those crazy, you know, elite costumes while the rest of us a place <laughs> struggle. That, a place that Megan would fit right in. Absolutely. And she's not wanted there. Yeah. Even. So... This was the only thing coming up in her diary. Yeah. This award that no one even heard of before. And of course, we all heard of it because of the reaction of Megan being honored. Yeah. It's just like the Gracie Awards. Had you ever heard of the Gracie Awards? Nope. What the hell are the Gracie Awards? It's all these awards that we have all never heard of. I've never heard of the Ripple of Hope Award. Mm -hmm. And I've never heard of the NA. 
NAACP award, all the awards she and Harry have been getting. Yep. A lot of us, you know, I'm sure some haters out there are going to be like, you're an uncultured swine. Nah, it's the common commentary. Yeah. A lot of us would never have heard of these organizations and their mm. awards. No disrespect to them. Had it not been for Meghan Markle. Yes. That's the only thing she's good at. Yes. Bringing attention, whether it's negative or positive, mm. to something. And I don't think she's ever brought positive attention to anything. I think that it's always negative attention because yeah. the next time someone says award, even the very word award before Megan got onto the scene, the idea of the Oscars and the idea of any award ceremony, I think all of us thought this is just pompous parade for pompous people, you know, because yep. we it lost its value. Yep. People were winning awards who didn't deserve it. And now we've reached the pinnacle of that, mm -hmm. you know. This is someone who doesn't deserve any accolades whatsoever, who needs to go away as, you know, as soon as yesterday. And, you know, now next time someone wins an award, it, people are going to be like, oh, an award. Who it's did they pay off? Yeah, exactly. It what's funny is at the top of uh, in my Elizabeth Holmes video, the reinventor, the first comment, the highest rated was. Gloria Steinem's going to give Liz an award next year. <laughs> no, absolutely. I did see uh, that even Forbes is being questioned about their integrity when it comes to who they're putting on the front covers. Absolutely. And I hinted at that at the end of my Elizabeth Holmes video. Yes. Yeah. Because I talked about Elizabeth and then I was like, and guess what? It looks like the world hasn't learned its lesson yet. Nope. Because Forbes has done it again. Yep. And I will be covering this other young woman. Um. In, you know, at some point in the series. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's just a farce. Yeah. It's a farce. And, you know, at best, I'm willing to give them they were followed by the paparazzi. But as the cab driver said it, and as Baggrid said it, they kept their distance. Mm -hmm. It was never a chase. Yep. And if anyone was driving recklessly, it was Meghan and Harry's people. So if anyone put them in danger and made them feel scared. Yep. Or that they were in a catastrophic car chase. They need to look at their own staff. Absolutely. That's what they need to do. Yeah. And one more point. If I hear one more person in the media saying, poor Harry, his mother went through this. And so he must be so traumatized. I mean, I heard this saying recently. Let all ghosts rest. Yeah. Why won't this man let his mother rest? Why is he reducing her? To a car crash. And furthermore, that's by design. I mean, that's it, exactly why Megan did it. Because she wanted, as I said before, to sink the clothes in. I mean, that's Megan. Why doesn't Harry honor his mother's memory and tell her to stop? And my mother is more than just her death. Because that's what he's doing. Anytime he brings her up, mm -hmm. nine times out of 10, there's the one out of 10 where he goes, she's a humanitarian and I want to you know, continue yep. her legacy, which is fair enough. And he was doing a great job of that before Meghan. Yes. That's the thing. Harry was so likable. So it's either he changed mm -hmm. or he was always an a-hole. Yeah. And the royal family was just really good at covering up for him. But by all accounts, he was a likable person. Yeah. He was doing good in the world. Yep. Yes, he made mistakes with his stupid costumes and his stupid racist comments, yep. you know, but we all, you know, the world forgave him. I wasn't, we all forgave him. I was a kid for all of it, but the world forgave him yep. because he was a likable young man and people felt pity for him. Yeah. You know, he was lost because his mother died. But guess what? William lost his mother too. Mm -hmm. And we're not seeing him prancing around, bringing her up 24-7. Mm -hmm. And not only bringing her up in a good way, right? Yep. You, they can do that all they want. Yep. But bringing up her worst moment. Yeah. Her death. The part that if she was, you know, someone that you could speak to on a Ouija board, she doesn't want to talk about that. I'm sure she doesn't. I mean, she doesn't want to be remembered as that. Exactly. But that's what this man has reduced her to. Mm. You, want, you want to know the difference between Harry and William? One of them's a boy and one of them's a man. Well, one of them is a man of integrity. Yeah. You know, I, obviously I don't know him, but I always say this, that is a good man. Yeah. That is a good man with a good wife. Yeah. And they're just good people. Yes. And, you know, Megan and Harry need to stay away from them because good people and bad people don't mix. Exactly. And I'm so glad William has backbone because, you know, many good people kind of 
shirk sometimes. Yeah. I'm generalizing, but there is this notion we have, right? Where good, nice guys finish last and good people are taking advantage of. Yeah. William's not one of those. Mm -hmm. And neither is Catherine. I thought she was a bit of a, um, what's the word? You know, a bit of a daisy, just kind of, that was my impression of her when I was younger. Yeah. But now that I've gotten older and I'm paying attention to her, no, she's got backbone. Yeah. But she's also nice mm. at the same time. And it emanates out of them. It exudes out of their face. Yeah. You can tell. And um, Harry, just let your mother rest and maybe stop making memoirs and do, going on publicity tours mm -hmm. and stop accepting glitzy awards that you and your wife don't deserve. Yeah. Maybe then the paparazzi will back off. Maybe. Because maybe, if he goes away. Maybe if they stop courting the attention, yeah. they'll stop receiving it. Yep. Absolutely. And with that... Spot on. I think uh, we're going to end it there. I yeah. really enjoyed this episode. Yeah, it was great. This was a great episode. And I hope you all enjoyed it too. Um, yeah, I think that's all we have to say until the next time. Yeah, sounds good. You have anything else? No, that was that was perfect. I couldn't finish that any better. Okay. Like, yeah, you smashed it. All right, great. All right, guys. Uh, take care, everyone. Thank you so much for all the support and for tuning in. And uh, we'll catch you in the next one. See you then. Later. Later.